All right, new clap. All righty then. Hey, man. Hey, what are we doing? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we said that already this morning. That's all right. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're at your shop. Welcome back. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's good to be back. We're, uh, we're back on air. We, uh, we had a little, abs, uh, little absence of... Uh, I thought you were going to say time. abscess. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe later, but not today. Um, we've we've been off the air for a while, uh, and it's, in two ways. It's yeah, the well, show the and sh- the podcast. The show's been off for almost three years now. I think we, I think our last, we did our last one in nineteen. It sounds. It was before COVID. Yeah, and yeah, we, and yeah, just right before COVID. So it's, uh, it, it was, it was a good run. You know, uh, eleven, eleven seasons. 143 episodes. Eight years. Yeah, of course, the show is Salvage Dogs. Right. The show in question. And we were uh, it was to follow the ex- exploits and implosion of, of <laughs> Black what, Dog. what Black Dog was or is. Black Dog is still around and doing its thing. Uh, well, let's not jump the shark yeah. here. My name is Tay Whiteside. This is my dad. Mike Whiteside. Mike Whiteside. Yep, uh, of the, the Whiteside fame. That's only, right. only one side, though, You're not, the, not two sides. The, the the local genesis of the white sides. I'm representing, correct. <laughs> correct. I hope I am, well, too. Well, yeah, you're my... You're my... Spawn. You know, spawn, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're carrying on the name, if there's a name to carry. No, that's a proud, I'm happy to carry yeah, it. Yeah, so is, so is Gracie. But, uh, yeah, we've been in uh, Roanoke... You guys have been in Roanoke since 1996? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, it was 93, I think. No, I was born in 93. I was three when what, y'all moved. 96, we moved up yeah. here. And then I got up here in 99 after being in, in the yachting business. Working in ships and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I was never home, so I just decided to get out of that business and get into this, this business. Not the podcast business, but the, <laughs> but the salvage business. Well, this is the even further evolution of that. Right, right. So we... Uh, if this all has worked correctly, this is episode seven, technically, right, of the Black Dog Salvage podcast as it exists. And uh, the, if it doesn't work that way, then this is the first episode. I think it's going to work that way because it's it's, <laughs> it's still, easy to transfer it, over. I'm doing some research. It's still out there, and uh, we we work real hard at it, and it became uh, well nobody nobody really tuned in. You know, that's is that all right. You yeah. know, it wasn't, it didn't have great numbers. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Were we overproduced or whatever, but. Well, in, 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 I think the lackluster numbers hurt more when there's a lot of energy put into something. Yeah. And, and what, in this case, there was a lot of manpower and a lot of energy poured into it. Yeah. We had an editor. Some necessary, some, I'm not going to say unnecessary, but it felt like a lot. It was heavy. It was kind of like a the show, but on, without the video you know mm-hmm. and it and it was just like that because we were finding guests to come on you know we had some great guests and like, yeah uh, steve thomas and uh, rutledge wood rutledge wood and uh we had mark bow with barnwood who's yeah. still out there doing it maybe we'll have him back he's he's a lot of fun carrying the torch yeah we yeah. learned about um how pigeons poop I yeah think, well because of mark he's uh they only have one hole i hear uh-huh. It's uh, the both exits, <laughs> the revolving door. You know, I'm sure he's got a lot more. Well, we look forward to someday having that, uh, having him back maybe. Yeah, um, that's great. But we also had Jimmy Dykstra. Uh, Dykstra? No. Uh, Dere- Deresta. Deresta. Thinking Excuse of Aaron Dykstra. Me. Aaron Dykstra. Jimmy Deresta, who is a, a maker. He's that's got, right. He's got a you, YouTube own, YouTube phenom. master. Yeah. He's always got his, he also has a, a show going on these days. I think he's on TV. Yeah, a new one called, well, a podcast called Making It, and uh, maybe a show of the same title. I can't Something remember. Something with kids. He had some things where he's doing bills with kids, you know, uh, young young folk. Oh, that's right. Yeah, some kind of summer camp feel sort of show. And then we had Bill Hayes, uh, the producer, one of the, the producers of uh, our uh, our reality series. Well, he was the, it was his IP, basically, right? It was his, it was his sort of idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they said on the check when he got one every, yeah. every month. We're dancing around a lot of plot lines that we want to separate into episodes. Um, the roadmap, what we're trying to do here is we've simplified things. Right. We've just got, this is all our stuff. We're sitting here in my office here at Lift Arc Studios uh, at a table I made, thanks to skills I learned from him. And it's... Uh, You're welcome. We're going to, we strip things down. We're simplifying it so we can keep doing it. Yeah, because we want it to be sustainable, and we want to keep uh, 
you know, get, creating content for y'all. And selfishly, this is a fun excuse to sit down and have a good conversation. Yeah, I mean, Tay and I are close, but, you know, we don't, even though we live in the same town, we don't see each other as much as we'd like. Oh and God, and it's because he's so busy and I pretend to be busy. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you're in a position where all you, you, you have to do is pretend to be busy. Well, you know, it's, it's a choice, you know, being busy is a choice. And I'm lucky to, to be where I am in my life right now where I've, uh, you know, we've, I'm getting to a, a ripe old age of uh, 66 and a half. Uh, that's because I just started uh, collecting my Social Security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear I didn't think I'd ever collect Social Security. I, you know, being in my 30s and I said, I'll, it'll never be here when I'm. I get to that right because age. it felt so far away, or because you thought finance like it would be abolished. Or yeah, it run out of money, and, yeah. and it really has run out of money. It's just, but it's you know, it keeps coming. I only got one check so far, so I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> keep re- paying your taxes, folks. <laughs> That's right. This man needs a retirement. All you youngins, pay for the boomers. I know the boomers are uh, there. There's a lot of us right now. A lot so. more boomers than than us, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's there's no doubt. Yeah. You know, and and but we're you know we're we're maturing and. And driving around in RVs and spending all of our money that we accumulated. That's good. And I haven't. I haven't the British st- call you caravanners. Is that right? You're caravanners. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Clogging up the roads with your RVs. I mean, matter of fact, I got a guy just coming right here in a few minutes. Uh, to He's got an RV. So uh, he was one of our first mates on boats when your mom and I ran boats. Oh, but wow. That's another story. Wait, he's stopping by here right now? Well, in about an hour or so. so oh, okay. You know, after we finish. Sure. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a it's been a fun ride. The uh, you know moving to Roanoke and deciding to yeah. to start a, a salvage business. Well, let's yeah, let's dive into the timeline. We'll bring. I want to treat this sort of as like an official record, right? We'll bring everyone up to speed on how we got here, the origin right. story, if you will, right. of how we got right here. Maybe not all of it. No, but. we won't go too well. I was I was born in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. I was born in Boone, North Carolina, but. Uh, yeah, give them that. Yeah, Where's your, what's I'm, your bio? I'm a North Carolinian, born in the, the mountains of North Carolina, which is Boone. This is Roanoke, Virginia's Mike Whiteside uh, talking. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's nice to know that, that, uh, that somebody knows me. Uh, I think but, a lot of people know you. <laughs> but my dad, my dad was a student there in uh, 1956. In Boone? In Boone, North Carolina. And he had, before he graduated, he had three kids. And that's... Uh, High school or college? College. Yeah. Yeah, he became a history teacher. So uh, Lynn, my oldest sister, myself, and Jeannie, young, next to the youngest, was, uh, were born there. And then uh, 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 Jody, my youngest sister, was born in Charlotte. Okay. And that's where I grew up, with Charlotte, North Carolina. And it was a kind of a big little town back then, about the size of Roanoke. And, uh, you know, it's, it was quite, that's hard to it, imagine it was quite yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean we had a high rise of about a 26 uh, story building downtown i think it was so it's it, it was a uh, but charlotte today is a big city and then um in 19 1990 no 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 1976 i didn't know your dad was a history teacher he wasn't one for long oh he didn't <laughs> he did it for about three years and figured this ain't the stuff from this ain't my 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 gig uh, I never it. really got into all that, all that. I'd like to get a little bit more information on, on my dad's history and my mom's. It goes pretty, ba- pretty, pretty far back into the Eastern Bloc. I yeah. think we got some, some lineage from you. Czechoslovakia, Czech, as far as Czech, I know. Czech, Russia, yeah. Ukraine. We, got, we come from there. Right. So we've got some you know, solidarity with you, you, Ukraine. Yeah, we stand with Ukraine. Yeah, with our lineage. Uh, but anyway, uh, Charlotte grew up there, went to high school, um, graduated in, in – uh, 74 and then what high school shout uh, out harry p harding high shout out harry p harding that's right don't mess with the 28208 everybody (laughs) that's uh that's the west side of charlotte if anybody knows anything about charlotte that's a bad side of town (laughs) and so we were we were kind of scrappy back in the 70s i guess we're talking 70s yeah and i left in 76 when i joined the navy Mm -hmm. went to california uh, and in a helicopter squadron, HS-8, and we deployed on the Kitty Hawk. Did uh, two Westpac cruises, that's Western Pacific. Uh, peacetime Navy, we call it, uh, because it was post-Vietnam, pre-Gulf, and I had a great time. I was great. in my early 20s, just wide open. <laughs> and, uh, and, and my, uh, you know, everybody's got tattoos these days, and I don't have one. There's a real funny story about that. Uh, my grandmother, a Nana, she said, Michael, you can do anything you want, but promise me you won't do one thing. 
And I said, what's that? And she said, don't get a tattoo. <laughs> this was your grandma. My grandmother. My great grandma. We called her Nana. And I loved her so much, and I said, you got it. So I did everything else, but I never got a tattoo. I'm going to just let y'all fill in the blanks. Really did everything else. I'm yeah. going to let y'all fill in the blanks there. 20 years old and running around the, the Western Pacific. Lots of fun. Traveling all over. And that's yeah. kind of where I got my traveling bug. You know? I've heard parts of these stories. You know, yeah, so. you know, a couple beers. and. Uh, so we're talking late 70s, early 80s on, a, on an aircraft carrier? Not in the 80s. I got out in 80. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, it was all in the 70s. It was all in the 70s. It's the late 70s. We were the first task group to get into the uh, the Gulf when te- uh, Tehran's, uh, the embassy was taken in Tehran back in 1979. So we were ready duty in the Philippines, and they right. sent us over, and we just did – did circles out in the I.O. in the Indian Ocean uh, for three months. And wow. then we were relieved with uh, the Nimitz, and we went home. But I was so short, short meaning that uh, not, not height-wise, but uh, uh, time-wise, I was about to get out. And they had to, I had to be back in the States before they did that. So they flew me home from the Philippines. Wow. And I checked out. I had a, little, had a Volkswagen that I turned into a Baja bug. Nice. And I drove it. I left and said adios to California and went to Colorado, hung out there for a little while with a buddy of mine named John Lovins, a Navy buddy. And then uh, after a couple of years there, you know, from skiing and golfing and caning chairs, you know, we'll, we'll, there's, a, there's another chapter of the book coming after that one just to figure out what, <laughs> yeah. that, what that's all about. Yeah, right. Probably, I bet no one uh, listening. Well, very few people listening probably know what caning chairs caning is. Caning chairs. I was a chair weaver. Yeah. John, John. Well, you were a—I don't know if you hit that, but you were a parachute rigger in the Navy, right? Right. Was your main? That was our. It was air crew survival equipment. So if you jumped out of a plane or fell out of a plane or whatever, left the plane, <laughs> we were taking care of you. And uh, luckily, in in three years, eleven months, fifteen days, I did not. They never used one of my chutes, and that's a good thing because that's great. If you're using the chute, you're, you're in the shit. So we don't know if your chute would have worked technically. Yeah, they would have worked because you know I was I was. <laughs> I was a good boy. I was a good rigger. You know, you followed the, you followed the, 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 the book. Yeah. And these were high-tech shoots. If you could be sitting on the hard or sitting on the runway and punch out and be under a parachute before you hit the ground. Wow. So that's what, 30 feet, that was 40 like, feet? No, 500 feet. Oh, You'd God. You'd shoot you up 500 feet, and then we had a – this is getting really deep into the parachute rigging. Yeah, sorry, I'm bogging it down. We had a – uh, it was like basically a grenade, and it would blow the skirt of the, of the parachute open up out Whoa. 360 degrees and then you're already coming down pretty fast and it catch you so as, as long as it takes for those lines to go to, to yeah. tighten you're, well, you you, you're you can see them on youtube uh there's some you can google google them and see see how it how it goes every punch out is usually pretty close to the ground and it's uh probably kind of violent yeah too. if you survive the that you're you're golden because <laughs> yeah, it's pretty violent you can imagine yeah. going from zero to 500 miles an hour and and yeah, you know, seconds. And then the opposite when you're falling, and then well, phew, yeah, you know, it's not the caught. it's not the falling that hits you; it's the stopping. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> the rapid change in inertia. So yeah. anyway, it's uh, uh, I I did that for what three years, eleven months, fifteen days, and um, but, but who's counting? I'm, well, I was uh, fifteen days. They let me out fifteen days early. Okay. So uh, from there, this is I mean, this is really diving into me. This is kind of the abridged uh, Reader's Digest version of my. I life. love this though because some of this I haven't even heard. Yeah. Oh, there's there's still a lot more. I know, but yeah. see, this maybe, is um, maybe we'll get into it. I'm one glad of these we're days. doing this. Maybe I don't even. Maybe no one. Everyone's probably tuned out at this point. Yeah. But for yeah. no other reason. Who knows? This is for me. Knows. Well, fast forward or slow down. Or, All right. So you got out of the Navy in eight in eighty. Eighties, and then I went to uh, Colorado. I was a ski bum for a while. Like I said, uh, played golf and and cane chairs and skied. What and a life. That was good. You know, yeah. Early, early uh, mid twenties, but about that time, and then I did a airboat charter down to the Caribbean. And that means you go down, you you rent a boat, and they and you drive it. Yeah. So that's kind of bare boat, meaning no crew, no crew, yeah, no crew, nothing, no food, nothing. You got to put everything on. So I went down there for two weeks uh, and fell in love with the water. And so I did another bare boat charter a couple years later, or a couple months later, really, and then decided that's what I want to do for a living. So I moved to Fort Lauderdale. A friend of mine down there uh, from Charlotte, Tracy Aker, was uh, living there, and I had so I had a had a place to bounce. And went down and walked the docks, and um, it was kind of funny. I was, what did you, what did you, what was your first job in Fort Lauderdale? I was, I was tuning skis, snow skis in Florida, in, in Fort Lauderdale. For who? 
Uh, it was a <laughs> Peter something. It was a it was a uh, sports shop, but they had a biggest. I think they had the biggest ski club in the country in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale. The natural snow. You don't ski there. You go to Colorado to ski. Oh. Yeah, but so I had I knew how to do it, and there was an opening, so I did it for three days. And I said, "The hell with this." If I have to do this, I'll go back to Colorado. So I right. went and got a job at Bahia Mar, which is a big uh, marina hotel complex, as a dock master. Not dock master, Jeepers. I never made a dock master. Dockman. Yeah. And a, a buddy of mine uh, I made, John Ferguson, was, uh, he, he, he gave me the, 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 four, the 911, the 411, the info. So, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're like helping boats. Driving More around, up. hooking them up. You know, yeah. John would take the expensive boats because you get a bigger tip, and he let me uh, – he let me uh, get the runaround. Do, do do the small boats and the sailboats who didn't tip at all. So, <laughs> so I learned, and then I got a job uh, uh, running a working on a, a sailboat, fifty five footer. It's going up and down the east coast. So it was private for a guy named Dick Jason, and um, that's where I pulled my chops. Got my first uh, my captain's license after that, which was a hundred ton master, and I worked in the yachting business for fifteen years. Yeah, ended up and that was that was during when you were born. Matter of fact. Well, you were still doing that. I was, yeah. yeah. You were born in ninety three, mm-hmm. and um, and I was I didn't get out of it until ninety nine. So I got pictures of you, you as a baby on on the boat. It was it was kind of funny. I've seen a few of yeah, them. Yeah, maybe not. I'd love to flip through a few of those. Yeah, there uh, there's a few, not a lot, but a few. Yeah, so got, the consensus that I like, I've always known that you and mom, like y'all's early life and how you met, is, it should be a movie script. Well, Some of that you can probably gather from yeah, what, every, your story, you know, but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you know that happened, and it was it was a good time. And, yeah. And but uh, we had uh, Gracie came along. Gracie's our, uh, my daughter, and and Susie In had ninety six. Susie yeah. had a full or ninety five full house and needed some help, and I was always at sea. So and mom was from Roanoke. Yeah. So and, she, yeah. And she, so she said, "I'm going home." I said, "Okay." You know, as long as I got an airport and a telephone, I can work. Yeah, right. And I did. And uh, but I remember early, that's one of the, some of my earliest memories were like meeting you at the airport and flying down to the boat yard in, in Florida. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Seeing the walls of boats stacked up in the boat yard. Yeah, and, you were a little guy too. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Riding around with you on that moped. It's a Honda. Honda Champ. Yamaha Champ. I think it was a Honda. Was it Yamaha? I think it was Yamaha. Okay. I remember f- fixing it up, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I had it. I brought it back up here, but... But so that, that's how you got to Roanoke. <coughs> that's the yeah. That's that's uh, how the family came say, back here. They so came up in '99 permanently, and everybody's going. Well, there's no boats here. I said, Yeah, imagine that. You know, we're at a thousand feet above sea level here. So you left it in Florida. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a uh, there was one opportunity here to drive a boat. It's called the Virginia Dare. And I oh, had, the and, one on Smith Mountain yeah, Lake. And back then, I said, Well, what does it pay? It's fifty dollars a day, and you had to do three trips. Good Lord. I had a 1,600-ton master's license, and I wasn't about to scuff. That's like working at a county fair. <laughs> like, it, I mean, it, don't put them down. It was, uh, it was a good job for somebody, but it wasn't me. Yeah. And, and you know, this older fellow, I wasn't an older fellow at that point. I was in my 40s. But, you know, uh, you, you do what you do. And, and then we uh, – I needed a garage built. And at the house. Yeah, we had bought a, yeah. bought a piece of property, and I, I was looking for a garage to put all my woodworking tools and stuff in. And um, uh, asked somebody I'd met, said, I need, need, need a contractor. And one guy says, I, I can't do it, but I can recommend somebody. The next guy said, I, I can't do it, but I'll recognize someone. Girls, people exist it's outside. It's okay. okay. It's all right. Hey, shush. And, um, That's Stella and May trying to join in on the podcast. Come on, baby. You got it. People hear you. So what was I? Garage. Garage. So the third person I got was Robert Culp. Robert was a contractor. He's With, a, uh, was he Blue Ridge Residential still back I then? I don't know if he'd called himself Blue Ridge Residential, but I don't know. I can't remember it, but yeah. it, shortly after. Um, so he said, basically, I don't want to build it either, but I'll tell you what I, what I know. You know. I'll give you some advice. And, and uh, from there, we, we got along. And I don't know how it started, but there was a house. He said, well, you know, what are you doing? I'm, I gave and that, I helped you build that garage, right? Yeah, you, you, were, you essentially built it yourself, let's be honest. But Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those steel master buildings. Uh, Looks know. like an airplane hangar. Yeah. I, love I have it. early memories of lifting you up on the forks of a forklift to, a, to bolt so it. Probably what? 10? Yeah. <laughs> Lifting dad up with the pulling the well, hydraulic you know, lever. You were, you were a gearhead from, from the day one. You True. Like have, have a, 
you know, uh, egg beaters and tools Always in your hands. Love gears, yeah. yeah. So you uh, you you got it got it easy got it early. Oh, I it's funny because like I I I don't understand. I've never understood, and this sounds like a point of privilege. It kind of is. I've never understood what it feels like to not know what you're interested in or what you're into. Cause I feel like from day one, I've always been into mechanics, gears, right. how things work, construction, right. construction, equipment, tools, right. motors, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, you get that. And from- now I still, you know, I've structured my life in a indirect way to like be self-fulfilling. Well, you've, you found your, that. you found your, you found your passion. Yeah. You know, and I'm, uh, we're lucky to have, uh, you guys, uh, find something you really like in life and, and do it and excel at it. And that's you and Gracie and you've, you're following your path. You're, you know, living your truth, which is, you know, more than, than a parent can, can ask for in these days and times when, you know, kids don't know where they, where they want to go and they're, they're scared. Yeah. Well, you know? I have some friends that still don't yeah, know what just, they want to do in their thirties, you know? Yeah. Well, I didn't know what I wanted to do either, but I mar- got married in thirty five when I was thirty five. So yeah. I wasn't ready a minute before though. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm not. There's no I'm, hurry. What's I'm the, almost thirty, and I still feels the, like a lot. What's, yeah. the, what's the hurry? You got your you got your whole life, and, and there's a lot of well, anyway, that won't go anywhere. Yeah, right. This yeah, is the therapy this, session. This is the, yeah, it's going to switch over. So you met quick. Robert in the ni- late nineties, I guess, mid nineties. Yeah, it was ninety nine. Yeah. And that's the year we started Black Dog. And so uh, I, I said I was – I don't know how the, the, the subject came up, but uh, there was a house that was – So this – I'm going to preface this. So yep. this – you guys have probably told, with all the press and everything you've done for Black Dog and Salvage Dogs, how many times would you, would you say you've told this story that you're about to tell? The house, right? The first house. The first house on Highland Avenue. I know I've heard it from you all probably 30 times. I don't know. I mean, you know. Who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds. Yeah. But that's okay. But it shows you, I guess, how pivotal this moment was as far as what else, well, everything that happened afterwards. Well, we had a, a... So the house. Yeah, we had a garage that your mom and I had a garage that we're, uh, we were running a, a failing business out of. Won't go there. <laughs> and uh, we decided, I decided to... Uh, we still had a rent on it and met... Uh, Robert and then told me about this house, this 21 Highland Avenue, and a guy named Not Al- Garage, the shop, you the, mean, the, the shop. warehouse that you were renting. Yes. The old Marstella building. The old Marstella building. Yeah. yeah. If you're a Roanoker, that was on Franklin Road right there where Franklin hits River's Res- Edge. Reserve. Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, good spot. Um, old uh, tile. And it's, anyway, there's, that's, you, know, you can go deep into the Marstellas. They were key. It's kind of funny because they built the mantles and, and millwork for houses. And also did tile, decorative art tile. Yeah. Right in that same location that we started Black Dog. But we did this house. It was almost the best house we've ever done on 21 Highland Avenue. It was up on uh, Orchard Hill, which was, uh, you know, I guess where the uh, the railroad barons lived. You know. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Big uh, old time railroad money. Roanoke, well, Virginia is a big railroad town. Used for those to be. that have never been here. It used to be, yeah. You can yeah. see a lot of the remaining infrastructure from that. Oh yeah, the East End shops are yeah. still there, but there nobody's doing anything. Uh and it was Norfolk and Western, now Norfolk and Southern, but uh we uh we got this house and it just had some amazing pieces in it. Just some beautiful art tile figurines going around the the mantle, massive mantles, massive doors. And we did we spent three weeks on that house, just two of us. I think you come and help. You, you you were you were about old enough to start helping. I think around twelve years old, and you helped us. I don't know if you remember that. I don't really remember. Yeah. No, that's probably. I would love. If you guys had pictures of the place. I'd love to see them. Not many. Yeah, and that was before you know, before you know eBay and eBay. eBay was just starting, you mm-hmm. know, and so we didn't have any pictures. Right. Uh, but, you know, cell phones didn't take good pictures. No, terrible ones, probably. Yeah. And yeah. so, it, but it, we took it over to this the shop that uh, we had, and just stuck it in there, saying, you know, maybe we can sell the stuff. Had no. So you got it. I mean, just that was the first. How'd you know what to take in the first? Well, just you know, you take the the pretty things, you know, the stained glass and t- tiles and stuff that would give it up. Woodwork, fancy you know, woodwork. And then we started taking columns outside and and stone. This is a it's an amazing house. We could have spent months on it. But anyway, we didn't. We got it over there, and, and before you knew it, uh, people people were buying off the back of the truck. 
you know, just pulling, what do y'all got? Yeah. So I took an old uh, old banner. A proof of concept, some yeah. people would call it. <laughs> yeah, that. it proved itself before we were even looking for it. Yeah. Uh, and had no intention of starting a business, but just this is this can be a, you know, spec venture, just, you know, beer money. Yeah, right. And uh, then we uh, we turned the sign upside down, used uh, just black paint and brush, and just wrote salvage on it. And hung it up on the building. You know, you had all the the paint running down from the letters on the south. <laughs> yeah. And some, and then we started. Uh, that was a, that was the start of Black Talk. Um, so that, that day, was that day technically was, the day the was, doors opened. The day you sell something is the day you're in business. Yeah, which was 90, 1999. 99. summer. You remember what time of year? No, it was <laughs> it was it was fall. I think. No fall. I, I mean, it's hard. To, it's hard. To I doubt back. you would have done that job in the dead of winter. Yeah. Probably, but, but, but we. Well, you know, we, we have, you yeah, know, we have we, since, we, that's we have. for sure. It's just put on some clothes. Uh, but the way we, uh, we came up with the black dog name was kind of interesting. Robert and I were thinking about, you know, what to call that Southwest Virginia's architectural South. So you Virginia. both then had a, a time where you're like, all right, well, let's do this. Yeah, we're here. You yeah. know, first, first rule is you don't necessarily have to name yourself. You just have to open your door. First rule of retail. And Robert probably, as a full time contractor, was like, "Well, this will yeah. be my side gig." Yeah, and I wouldn't do anything, you know. Yeah. It's, it's like, let's go. So I, we opened from ten to two to start. Perfect bankers and, hours. And we're, we're we're trying to figure out what the name of the place. And uh, we had uh, Molly with us all the time. The uh, first black dog. The first black dog. Black lab female. Yeah, she's the one who raised you guys. And, For sure. And she was always with me in my truck. And then Susie said, "Hey, why don't you name it Black Dog Salvage? Because we have a black dog that's with you." It seems so obvious now. It, it does, and but, but twenty but three years later, you but. just it's that's the 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 miracle of aver, of you know mer, not mer, uh, not mercantile of uh, uh, advertising. Yeah. You know, that's people sp- spend big bucks to get that kind of record, that kind of a name and theme. And yeah, feel the to logo it and the name. It just rolls off the top. Yeah, the ro- logo came, so it was a development. But that's how Black Dog Salvage got its name and how it started. Yeah, and so, I mean, there it was. Yeah. That, that's. That was it's it, pretty fast technically from when you did that job because you already had the building. Yep. Well, we did uh, probably before two thousand or right after two thousand. I guess probably summer two thousand. We uh, we we had done three or four projects, and it started to accumulate. The thing about this salvage is it, it's easy to get. I'm not the sweat and the pain, but the uh, the uh, the stuff. The stuff, you know, yeah. it's hard to sell. Yeah. So, and you got it. It's hard to store, too. To Before we get into the next phase, I I remember these were some of my first, my earliest memories, other than hanging with friends, were coming to work with you. Yeah. Because at 99, 2000, I was only uh, seven, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, well, you know, do the math, three, there. seven, eight. Yeah. I remember very clearly one time uh, going to work with you, and I, w- I, didn't, I wasn't interested in working yet, uh, nor did I don't think you asked me to work yet. But I remember uh, bringing – I had a Hot Wheels set, mm-hmm. and I brought it with me, and I set it up under one of the desks or something in the office to keep myself occupied I, while you were working. I mean, I didn't have much of an office, so you, you had to be smart. I was, I remember it was that, you know, you walk in the front door, you take a right and there's like a little office space and then you go out that door and there's the rest. And yeah, we had 3000 square feet. The rest of the building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we crammed it full. Too. I remember, um, I remember when you almost cut your thumb off in that wood shop. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't deserve either to have either one of them after I, those things. I couldn't have been probably 10 years old. Oh, your mom, I, mom was so mad. I didn't really know what was going on. She, I just, you were very calm. This must be where I get that too. You were probably holding it together and you're like, son, we got to get in the car. Yeah. We got to gotta, do we gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and the hospital was closed, but calling yeah. Su- call Susie and tell her to come pick up you at the emergency room wasn't a good call. Well, yeah. How you phrase that's very, yeah. ca- very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. Good, good news is honey. I got my, I got my thumb. Yeah. Where Taylor, oh right, you know, yeah, and, that's uh, great, that's great. Where's our son? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, and rightly so, you know. Yeah. So we had a uh, uh, that was the yeah uh, that was the first injury. So yeah. of, of salvage, the big one. Yeah. yeah, I remember learning how to drive a forklift because I would drive the forklift around the backyard yeah. of that building, probably more than I should have. Oh, I'm telling you, what that was a uh, it was like four wheel drive with a with a uh, 
a fork truck, you know. Yeah, it was, just, it was all dirt. The was, back lot of that place yeah, was you all didn't, dirt. You didn't wander off because you'd go axle deep real quick. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was that's the start. It was it was kind of rudimentary and a lot of cool stuff. And I look at pictures from those days and. God, it's, I'm like thinking about that building now. I'm putting the yeah. images back together in my head. Oh, I got them. I got it. It's, yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty. It had a little antique shop next door. Uh, yeah. Randall Stevens, I think it was. That's all gone now. That place is gone. Yeah, it's and, flat. And the building itself, it's a it's a grass grassy lot. Yeah, but when we yeah. when we left and we moved to where we are now, which is 902 13th Street Southwest, um, it was only about probably about three miles away, five minutes. Yeah. And now a pretty awesome location now I mean. and and, and I, we did it it was hot and it took us 45 days to move everything and so i remember all, helping with all that yeah i always tell people we, we took 45 days and i lost 20 pounds oh I was, yeah i was kind of skinny back then too so i was just sweating it off yeah yeah it was it was no fun I, i'll never do that again i'll have an auction if i'm gonna if i'm gonna have to move my company well, the salvage a salvage company is probably one of the more difficult things, other than like a giant machine shop or something. It's just a lot of parts, a lot yeah. of stuff. And everything's big and heavy. Yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah, I'm not in the, the, the jewel business. Yeah. I'm in the salvage business. <laughs> or the styrofoam business. Yeah, something light with yeah. air would be nice. Yeah, I, rem- I think when you made the transition to that building, they, this black dog's still in, uh, the, I was maybe considered technically an employee. Yeah, but, I, I was giving you $5 a day. I think it was twenty dollars a day. Was it? So you were four hours. It was five dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. And you were sweeping. It was to me. It was video game money. Yeah, I could. <laughs> you just loved it. You know, I couldn't. I couldn't get your attention on for five dollars an hour now. But that no. was that was <laughs> no that, one could. That, that was good. That was good money for for a twelve year old. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't have you on the books. That was just out of my pocket. Yeah, just know. cash. There yeah. you go. It was my allowance, but it felt well earned. Yeah. You know? So that's how you learned to to kind of move stuff around the forklift, the the tools, the driving. You, know, yeah. you didn't have a license, but you sure were, you could drive that. Oh, I yeah. did the same thing when I was a kid. My dad uh, worked for Hertz Equipment Rental in Charlotte, and I would go with him and, and just drive all over the the a lot with uh, forklifts and man lifts and basket cherry pickers. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really had a good time. Doing right. That. Yeah. Okay. Obviously yeah. we're related. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that same part of the brain. I, is I got it. Yeah. That was, uh, my dad was, he was, he had a, 15 jobs long when I knew him. Good he, Lord. He changed every, every year. Yeah. You know? Couldn't quite say. You were a little more stable than he was then employment wise. Okay, let's go. Let's go with that. <laughs> I said a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, you didn't get to meet him, but he was, I know I don't really remember Papa Gene. No, he was a character that guy. So and, then, so, so we're here in, in Roanoke uh, selling salvage. That's essentially the years two thousand. That's the thirty-two minute and fifty-three second origin story. Wow! Wow! Of, Sorry, uh, guys. <laughs> yeah, but the good part about this for those that have, are still listening. Thank you. Congratulations. You made it. We feel like you deserve some sort of award. Um, That's the beauty of this format right now and is the long forms here for those that want it. If you want the full how we got here moment, how Mike Whiteside came to be to open Black Dog Salvage. There it is. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fun it's a fun story. It's it's not necessarily a rags to riches kind of thing. It's more like rags to maybe a little cleaner rags with good stories. And yeah, yeah. and the stories come the, the stories come out. Tell everybody that the the ideas are free. You know, when, when folks are walking around and taking pictures of stuff, I can do that. I say, yeah, the ideas are free. Yeah, it's a it's an inspiration warehouse. Yeah, why not? Yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a compliment that people are you know copying your work. Yeah. You know, Imitation is the truest form of flattery, well, right? Yeah, that's what they say. You yeah. know, it's also can you can can, can kind of suck. Sometimes. Yeah, if you have copy, <laughs> if you have copyright or something yeah. like that, you might not yeah. like it. You know, those are hey, that was my idea though. First, that yeah. was yeah, I had it. Yeah, we'll prove it. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We, well, we're, we we learned we had to copyright and register our logo and, and name. Well, there was a a, a lot of. Small, you know, stumbling blocks y'all had to work through as a small business. You oh know? yeah, like, that's just a few that we had. I mean, every had, small business has stumbling blocks, but in it particular, was, it wasn't monumental. You know, uh, Robert was the accountant in the place, and he he liked counting the money. And and how uh, quickly did Robert become that the personality that people know him as because of the show, like the money guy, the the think the planner. He's the always thinker. been that. Yeah, as far as I'm known him. 
You know, yeah. I've known him for you know twenty three years. Well, he now. was a naval officer, I guess, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. real A type. Pressed. Then you call. There's pressed and unpressed in the Navy. Uh, yeah, Is that a Navy was, term. Uh, it could be. Uh, oh, I'm not I thought sure. Thought I heard that from you. Yeah, it could be impressed <laughs> or not yeah, impressed. Robert, Robert <laughs> is a you know he's got a command in control persona. Yeah, and um, I like and, that about him because I'm I'm off the hook a lot of the time. Yeah, so we really balanced uh, each other as far as personality and both For, had both had good work ethic and and you know I wasn't the money guy I was the creative guy. Yeah, that's that's how I started. And you gotta uh, have that though. Well, it's, it balances out. If you got two creatives, nobody's gonna you, you forget no. about the money. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, or both two people worried about money there's nobody out there making it right so it's uh, a good lesson in like relationships and oh yeah i always say marriage. robert's my second wife you know because <laughs> yeah. i got more debt with him than i do with your mom yeah but that's uh yeah that's, i feel like that's why it's lasted this long you know as a dynamic that or we're just so damn work. lazy we didn't feel like quitting you know true it, yeah it, you know <laughs> it'd be a lot of work to Pack this whole thing up. Yeah, we should yeah. have we should have gone non profit a long time ago, but we didn't. Yeah, that's what, uh, instead you went for profit and then and non profit, not making no profit, profit. <laughs> not making profit. That's more like it. Uh, but it's it's been a it's been an interesting story. Uh, you know, it's, it's fun to talk about it because yeah, you know, I don't. I, even though you think I do, I don't tell the story all the time. Well, not this version. That just, yeah. yeah, this is a this is a long version. I mean, and th- this is essentially you know. This was Black Dog was my childhood. Like yeah. the most parts of my childhood are either, you know, biking in the neighborhood, playing video games, or right. working at Black Dog. Right. And Black Dog was my first and only job for sixteen years. Yeah. He started I there. grew up there. You yeah, know, you that did. that was my daycare center. <laughs> well, you still had to go to school. Yeah, yeah. So in school, it was pretty much weekends, most weekends, yeah. and then summer break, I would work at Black Dog most of the time. Yeah, I as mean, much as I didn't want to. You know, All I wanted to do was, then was when, then dr- well, drink uh, sw- uh, uh, like sodas, sodas. We had a, energy drinks and play video games with uh, Jimmy, my butt, my best friend growing up. Uh, did he work with us? No, I didn't think so. No, but that was your that was your that's your what I time. Yeah, that's what you lived. That's what uh, work dragged me away from <laughs> as a kid. Gotcha. I remember butting heads with you a few times and just oh. having a shitty attitude. <laughs> About coming into work, you just know, a few times, like, yeah. You know, teaching someone, you can you can tell if he's got it. Just first, a few times, uh, if he's got work ethic or he's been raised. I call it raised proper. You mm-hmm. know, they'll uh, they'll follow what you say. You know, I said, well, you need to learn how to work that broom. And so, cleaning uh, was part of your your job. Mm-hmm. You know, sweeping up or whatever, you know, managing inventory. I remember I wasn't very good at it at first. But but you you got bad you did but you did it. You, yeah. You didn't say I'm not going to do that and you know f you you know I'm yeah. I'm, you said you did it and and now you know the value of it. God yeah now I'm really I'm so good at sweeping now. Yeah I mean you're you're you've taken it and you've you've done better things with it than I have. I'm still a little, oh stop. I'm still a little a little rough around the edges but but that's who I am. Sure. You know. Yeah. Well, I got that A type from mom. You know a little bit of that. Half and half. A uh, cleaning? No, no. I mean, <laughs> I hear you say, "I'm sorry, honey." No, sorry. <laughs> um, no, not necessarily. I was never really clean in, at y'all's house. It was when I moved out that I both you kids both became you and Grace. Yeah, were, I suppose. I suppose if you, yeah, uh, yeah, we were pretty messy. You're huh? a typical teenagers, you know. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, we got through the the hard the hard lessons. With uh, mostly unscathed, yeah. In life, you know, we didn't. I didn't hurt you on the job, which was paramount. And, it's uh, incredible, honestly, to think back how much we've done and how much of it was dangerous and how uh, little, frankly, we got really hurt. We we're pretty lucky. Hey, we never went to the hospital. No, I never did. I mean, you get something out of your eye or something. Yeah, you know, I doctor a few times, yeah. but never. I never broke anything no. on uh, with Black Dog. I mean, we had to minor send, lacerations. You we know. had to send send some folks to the to the ER to get stitched up or cast yeah. set or something. But it, I mean, knock on wood, it, it it never never took a lot out of me that way. Yeah, I and, mean, a lot of close calls. So. Oh yeah, but you, you <laughs> a lot know, of close calls. <laughs> you don't count those, you know. Um, I had somebody tell me I had nine lives. 
and you were on your I'm, eighth one. I, I, no, I was. I was. On, this is the wait a minute. Maybe I'm on my ninth. Uh, uh, ninth or uh, this is my tenth. Whatever. <laughs> if you believe in that kind of stuff, you're the only one that got the extension. You know, past life regression. Yeah. This, yeah. And I, you know, that was unscripted. This person just walked up to me one day, and she was a seer. You know, uh, you know what a seer is a yeah. you know um, can, sort of a fortune teller kind of person. Well, in a, in the more spiritual way instead of the carnival way, right? You know. You know, like Dorothy in the in the globe, mm-hmm. yeah. but she, uh, she said, "Yeah, said I had nine lives, and I had a you know my angels were behind me, and, and my spirit guide was a, I think he said it was a guy named Ronnie Rod, Rodney, and he had a mullet." This That's girl, your this girl, spiritual guide. This girl told me that you know, like you can't make that up, you know. So I got you know Rodney or whatever his name was, my my spirit guide, uh, behind me, but he had a mullet. Well, it's, it makes a lot of sense yeah, that your really spiritual does. guide would like, have a mullet. Look like Joe Dirt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mullet. Your spiritual guide is Joe Dirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. Yeah. yeah if he's out there, uh, you know, maybe some Rodney with a mullet. If your name's Rodney and you've got a killer mullet and yeah. you're probably in your 60s. Don't send pictures. <laughs> no, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah. Let's, we don't have an a email yet for this yeah, show, but I'm that's sure, probably for a good thing. I'm sure there's a lot of Rodneys out there with mullets. It's on the way back anyway. Anyway, I don't know where I got off on the sidetrack. Mullets, there. yeah, I know, yeah. right. Things but, that happened at Black Dog. Um, yeah, growing up there, all that. Um, yeah, and then I guess we could wrap this episode up by saying, you know, what it was like. You know, it was a that building right. that you're that is still in, Black Dog's still in, was first a giant laundry. Yeah. Right? Large-scale yeah. laundry. From the 1930s to the late 50s, I think, had a fire – Matter of fact, your father-in-law lost a couple of shirts in that fire. He never, never forgave him. Your father-in-law. Your, no, my, no, your grandfather. Yeah, yeah. Your mom's. You said father-in-law. That'd be your father. My father-in-law. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a father-in-law. No, no. <laughs> that's just something I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, interest. That's hilarious. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but we didn't. One thing we have talked about is how Black Dog started. I mean, uh, the the. The show. Well, we can get into that. Is that another time? Yeah, let's do that another time. Okay. Or maybe that'll be this time. It'll get us to zero. Because what we want to do here, we want to go through all of our episodes eventually, 143 of them, Mm -hmm. as part of the discussion of this thing. You know, this is what we did on that day and kind of not not really relive it, just kind of give – Kind of what we were doing early on the earlier sh- shows, just the rehash. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, like a recap series. So that I think, yeah, that that's going to be the backbone of this podcast right. going forward. Is going to I think you and I should watch the episode starting with episode season one, episode one, All right? And then uh, we well, maybe, will maybe Discovery Network will let us uh, let us use some footage. Yeah, wouldn't that be good, huh? Someone's going to be editing. All right, so we're going to. Oh, gonna, we're gonna, I just realized that microphone's not turned on. All this has is this is recording, but the never doesn't matter. That's okay. It'll be fine. We that's, can sync it later. Yeah, I mean that's that's okay. I'm yeah. just like that's, that's, that's <laughs> if this was a recording, that'd be a real that shame. That was unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's gonna peril, take a the, few weeks off. The perils of podcasting. Uh, I know, right? It makes me nervous. I like that they made the button on this board huge and it turns bright red when it's recording. Yeah. Um well let's do it then. Then so all right. It's pretty quick. It's a pretty quick story. Yeah. So Black Dog's established. It's in the early 2000s. You're in the new building. Right. Things are escalating. Yep. And 12 years go by of, of gradual business growth and, and right. establishment. And so, through that is but, learning how to build custom furniture and what to do with the salvage. And right. All Just that the, the story, how to sell it. The story that you saw on the show, if you've if, if you've been lucky enough to see the show, um, get out there and see it, everybody. Yeah. It's hot. Hot right now. Yeah. So it's hey, reruns are, well, I don't know when this is going to come out, but reruns are now back on the Magnolia Network, yeah. which used to be the DIY Network. Right. And um, But get Discovery Plus, and you can watch them all. That's right. That's right. Uh, it was a good time, but uh, we're, t- we're talking about how we started. And the show. The show, 2012. Yeah. But before that, there's a couple of players, one of them, Bill Hayes. Set the scene. Uh, figure 8 film. And Deanie and Kirk, they're, they're right-hand people. Mm-hmm. But Billy and I and Ned Hooper and Ted Ayers and Laurie Hooper, we're just, just, we called it Ned Fest after a while. 
um, we'd always go out and yuck it up, you know, just basically a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night fish drinking fest. Out, Great. Outdoor Camping. Co- outdoor cooking. Drinking, yeah, fishing. Yeah. It was uh, well. We fished. Didn't catch a lot, but I fished. You know, you fished for twelve ounces at a so time. So we 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 threw this at Billy, going like, "Hey, you know, you're in a business." He did Kate plus eight, Johnny Kate plus eight, the Duggars, uh, sister wives, sister wives. He's, yeah. he's got a, he had some TLC hits. Yeah, when I mean, what I told him, I said, "You got a lot of dysfunctional stuff." We're just as dysfunctional as they are. <laughs> I think we make great reality TV. Yeah, you know, and and we so we threw it at him. He did it, did the pilot. And uh, that's where we were down in South Boston. And this was 2012? Yeah. Yeah. 2012. I remember that job. So he had a few of his crew. Yep. Ajit. Max and, and Max, Ajit. Max. High tower. Came out one guy. Yeah. yeah. One it, guy producer, one guy camera. It was kind of, and it was, it was kind of funny that, you know, Billy's was, he was thinking this is going to be a, a, you know, a guy show. Man you know, show. Yeah. You know, tools and destruction. And, and that's how we, pro- we approached it. But. You know, he, after the first day, he said, hey, I think I'm just going to leave Ajit and, and Max there to, to uh, finish this up, and I'm going to head on home. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You can't leave. I mean, what's going on? Is this not – tell us what you need, you know. He says, it's just that it's not happening. Yeah. I said, okay. I said, well, come back tomorrow. Robert will be here, you know, give it a little bit more zing. Maybe I didn't – I don't think I used the word zing. But yeah. anyway, I said, Robert, it's the other part of the, the show. And so Robert came in and became and became Robert. You know, he just you know, immediately he's, was well. Like, he's assessing. You know, he's walking up. You know, hey, you're, that, that thing's going to fall on you. You know, this is you know, he's, he's the the clipboard carrier, the right, the the anti mic. Sure. And right. once we had the the, the, the yin, antagonist, the yin and yang. Yeah. Once we had that established, boom, that was it. That was the that was the snap that that made it come together. Right. Everybody else played in the in the on the show, and we followed everything. But our interaction was the was the glue. Sure. And and it still is. If we can ever. It was it. the whole way through the show. Yeah, the, and, and the, I think that's different. What, the dynamics. People begin yeah. to realize. Anyway, I'm stepping ahead a little bit. We uh, uh, he he took it, tried to sell it to the networks, and nobody. This, w- this first episode he put together. Right. Right. You know, or like, sizzle. What reel. they call it? Sizzle. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, he uh, he set it out there. And nobody took it, and except for somebody gave an offer, the, the Velocity Channel, which wasn't yet uh, like all car show it channel, was, which was, is what it turned it, into. Yeah. So, but it was too not enough money. Evidently, yeah. sounds good to me. But what do I know? Yeah. So we handed it over to Trailblazer Studios, who took the raw footage and worked it more of. To the format that we we ended up with, mm-hmm. where you know we're introing and we're doing a little picking and we're doing a little salvage, so but more human interest. You know, we're they're playing us. You know, we were we were out there in front of the camera doing our thing, and and that's that was the magic like I said earlier. And they took that and sold it to to DIY. DIY, yeah, Back in which tw- was a an offshoot. Well. Scripps Network owned DIY at the time. Yeah, with so H- food, H- food H- Network, H- food. all that, yeah, travel, travel Channel, yeah. 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 Which was huge. I remember when we figured out that we got picked up for a show. It was a really weird feeling. Like, oh. Yeah, it was kind of surreal. And it really, at the first, it was just five episodes, right? It was like a probationary sort of well, period. Well, they gave us five to say, you can make if you can make it in five, we'll give you more. You yeah. Know? And that's when we did our five. And so we were on our third one, matter of fact. And then they called up and said, we want to finish up the season, which was eight more. Yeah, 13 total. Yeah, we always did 13. Yeah. And so that's that was kind of the that was the first start. And, we're you know, we, we had a house and up, up the road on check. And it's... Uh, the rest is history. Yeah. You know, we'll get into those. It's called the Izzard House, but it was... Uh, Episode one, yeah. Yeah. You know, the the Roanoke rocket. The, I brought the rocket in. Mm-hmm. You know. You got a huge erection right on <laughs> national television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First and last. <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That, that was... That, yeah. You know, come, I'd come driving in with, uh, with it on the rack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was... That was fun. And know, normal. That, yeah. It wasn't anybody else out there doing it. We, we came into this, into the reality thing at the right time. It was a need for it. It wasn't oversaturated. Yeah, we weren't doing the same old thing. It wasn't scripted. None of it was no. ever really scripted. It's some of the early stuff kind of felt it because we didn't necessarily know what to say, and they would kind of hand us lines or, like, 
set it up this way or right. something, but it was never read this script and say this, you know. Or, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I don't oh, have a, we were all – when they every time they fed me lines, I was terrible. Yeah. At it. And say this, and, and then you'd say it one way, then you'd say it another way, then you'd say it another way. So yeah. You just want to say it one way, and I, I can't do that. I don't have – my memory is not that good. The first uh, organic time is the best, you know, Typically, typically, because yeah. usually – I mean, again, we don't have a whole lot of experience. We have eight years, but it was a good body of work. It was a great start to the – the the le- the last chapter of our life so far, and uh, and it's going to be fun. I hope uh, telling people about it. You know, I want to really. This is going to be kind of kind of fun. We're going to dig into it a little bit more. Yeah. You know, and, and we've never done that. No. We tried to do it on our first six, and I don't think we succeeded very well. Well, yeah, they had the guest in, and it became more about the guest, which is good. We might have guests on this one, too. But we, we hope so. I, have, I listen to podcasts from shows that I love. Shout out uh, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, who were in Scrubs. Yeah. The Doctor Comedy. Yeah, you used to, you're a real fan of that. I watched the heck out of that show, and they have a podcast where they recap every episode, and they talk about how they made it. You know, what it was like to film, the behind the scenes, oh, yeah. and it just goes chronologically. And I thought, for a fa- I was a fan of that show, and for me, I was like, well, this is an obvious watch. And I really liked hearing it, so, you know, this might be, hopefully there's people out there that engage with this well, you know, the same way. you know, we've got a pretty good fan base to start. You, uh, with uh, Lift Arc and your, your thing. But let's call a spade a spade. I mean, it all came most of it started i had a big springboard from black dog well, sure you know, i mean you got a leg up on it that's for sure and then but you know there's no apologies needed there's uh it's just a good thing yeah you know and you but you know you didn't have to do it and it no. became what you've made it. at times it, i didn't want to do it the spotlight was not my natural yeah uh, it was position kind of, yeah it was kind of funny watching you grow at black dog you, before you wouldn't even talk to people i you didn't would, you wouldn't say yeah. hello or anything and then and I said, hey, you got, you, we're in sales here. we got to talk to people. Oh, God, and, I was so uncomfortable. I know, but you got, you, you got good at it. Yeah. You can do it now. It's, it's truly amazing. I still deal with it today. Like, I have days where I'm just like, I do not want to talk to anybody. Right. Well, and you should not have to. But you can, <laughs> yeah, right. And now I guess that's probably, you know, maybe it's that I don't play well with others. But no, you do. I've structured my job now to, to be, I can interact as much as I want with people. Or I can close the doors and work on a project and yeah. zone out. Yeah, well, that's you know? uh, that's that's a, a a good trait to have in a business is is that you can, you know, find your your solitude. Oh God, it's therapy. I, I don't yeah. mind being by myself. You know, I love being by you myself. Know, <laughs> you know, when we were doing scouts for the show, I, you know, I was always I call it windshield time. Oh yeah, I just put on a you know a book or something and just you know drive for six eight hours. It's the best. Yeah, and then just I, they call it gunk holing in the in the uh, in marine business. Gunk holing is to to wander or search into smaller areas, back tributaries, looking around. Yeah, you know, that's gunk holing. So that's what I do. I just kind of gunk holing. I, I didn't say, I need to put that on your. Uh, no, that's that's a real name. That's a real word. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's you can do it. I mean, I, I didn't make that one up, but it, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like the way it. it it didn't sound like what it's supposed to sound like, you know, what yeah. it means, the meaning is. You would never assume it had anything to do with Yeah, do call hey, you can't do that around here. That's against the law in this yeah, this land. is a family show. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All, right. All right, we need HR over here yeah. right away. Uh, well, yeah, that's funny. I, maybe it'd be interesting to hear you talk more about what it was like to watch me change. Well, you know, just in the that. show alone, I mean, it was. The show, too. From Dude. 12 to, to 19. It, yeah, I was, so I was I grew, I had really just graduated high school when yeah. we started filming the I mean, show. Baby face, young face, no you know, early facial be- hair. Oh, you had an early beard. I was I was still a volunteer firefighter. Yeah, uh, so I had to keep somewhat trim, but I had just gotten over severe facial face acne. Yeah, I remember that taking oh, that poison. Jeez, God, yeah, weird. but it worked. Yeah. Accutane. Well, you, you lived. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. God, was, was it worth it? Things you do. I still have acne scars under my sideburns. but oh, That's all right. Uh, yeah. That, I mean, talk about an awkward time in your life to be on television. Yeah. 18. I mean, you're just out of high school. Budding, so to speak. You know, yeah. Just coming, to, coming into your own. And uh, now you're in the public. Yeah. I still, I think, have lasting 
effects from <laughs> probably I mean yeah. being on television from eighteen to twenty. You know, not, hey, six. look at it this way: yes. not many people can have said they can do that. They've done that. Oh, I know. You yeah. know, just I, I call it my my lotto ticket. You know, it's just it's so rare. That was yeah. To, well, and at that time too, I was doing three things. I was uh, in college, kind of. Right. It was kind of kind of messing community, that one up a community, little bit. Huh? Virginia Western Community College yep. in Roanoke. I was a volunteer firefighter and I was working at Black Dog. All three things. And so when the show came up, one of those things had to go. And in fact, two of those things right. went. I decided to just come to work That's full gonna, time. That was going to be your education. Yeah, when I thought I was like, well, the fire, you know, my certificates, my training certificates for the fire service are good for life. Which is kind of funny because they shouldn't be. No. I've forgotten most of that stuff. That's like antique plates. Those are the ones that should be inspected. Yeah, right. Yeah. Stuff's falling off of yeah. it. Uh, I could always go back to college if I wanted to. Sure. So, but you, you may not get another chance at a television show. So, well, in my mind, that was the opportunity that should be maximized. And, we're st- and we were starting to make some money at it. You yeah. Know, that's, I mean, that's the thing about what are you doing this for? Well, it's, you know, it's not to see myself on TV. It's to make something you know yeah it was time. not a vanity project for anyone for well, any of I us i mean it could have been i guess you know maybe for wasn't for me for one of us yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> we won't say yeah. he's got pretty hair <laughs> uh no it was uh what were, where were we I just oh, right off. here at the end i but. just wandered off that happens when you get old you, yeah. know, you just enjoy old. it just you just hear waves crashing and seagulls no, I wish. I mean, that would mean I'm at the beach, even if it's just in my mind. Yeah. You know. Well, let's. Uh, well, that that's like, a good place to wrap, I think. I think that's a good start, you know, to a restart of our. Uh, the uh, Black Dog Salvage podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just it, it, it's anywhere your podcast can be found. Mm-hmm. Our podcast can be found. is Spotify or Apple, Apple Music, Apple. Google Podcasts. That's right. All those things. Facebook. YouTube probably as well. Facebook. We should put these on the YouTube, the Black think, Dog YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That was kind of my idea with this. Hey, guys. Hey, YouTube. If you're still watching, yeah. doing laundry or whatever yeah, you've been life, doing in the you? background of this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sick some days and just laid down and, and watched three, four-hour video podcasts, you know? So Not our, I hope you feel better. Our podcast? <laughs> hey, they're really easy to watch, you know? They're, yeah. they're only 22 minutes. I mean, The show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so that's that's now you're up to speed, you know. That's how Black Dog started. That's how the show started. Well, I'm sure we'll flash back to part points as we continue. Yeah, but we're kind of up to 2012, the start of the of the first TV, episode, the TV thing. Yeah. So the next episode will be a we'll jump into episode one, season one, the Izzard House. Guys, uh, where can they find us, Tay? Well, I'm sure the link on blackdogsalvage.com will still be live. Yep. So there's a podcast page there. Go there. Um, you can follow Black Dog Salvage on Instagram, Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, watch Dad's Daily Dogs. Yeah, s- throw those out there once in a while. And you can follow me at Tay Whiteside on Instagram and also my shop at Lift Arc Studios on Facebook, Instagram, and we also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Studios. We just hit 20,000 subscribers. So. That's monumental. Huge. Yeah. yeah it starts to, it's like when we, you started Black Dog. It's starting to pay a little money now. It is. Yeah. Four years later. You yeah. Know, just starting hang in there. You know, it doesn't come easy. Yeah. But uh, so, let, thank us know you. What, let us know what you think. You know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Doesn't matter if you want to best us or. But. An easy, an easy addition to these episodes could be answering y'all's questions. Yeah. So we, we might have uh, some people dig through. I mean, there's been a million questions dropped everywhere online f- directed at us. But going forward now, um, shoot us some questions. Maybe info at blackdogsalvage.com. Yep. Or uh, just DM me on uh, social media. Maybe do that. Find me on. Uh, However you can find us. Drop a, yeah. drop a line. That's all we need. We just need to hear from you. I'm um, hoping everybody's uh, doing okay out there. There's a lot of craziness going around the world at the moment, and all we can do is find peace in ourselves. You can and control this right here. We're right here, right, right now. Here. Just enjoy the moment. Enjoy the, the place you're in because tomorrow's not guaranteed. I'm enjoying this, man. Yeah, this is fun. This is going to be uh, – it's very therapeutic. It's it's, but we're sharing it with a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our therapy is your therapy. Yeah, yeah. The good part about you guys is y'all can cut us off. Yeah. Anyway, uh, y'all take care. We'll see you when it goes around again. 
Thank you, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. I don't know. Do the things. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Cheers. See ya. That was good. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Maybe they liked it. Find out. You know, <laughs> it don't. It don't. It don't matter. Yeah. You know, just.